Dassault's new Falcon 6X business jet is built to fly passengers 5,500 nautical miles in comfort. But for the pilots working up front, situational awareness is paramount, and the aircraft's easy 4 avionics suite is designed to provide them with all the tools to make their jobs easier and safer. I'm Philippe Duchateau, the Chief Test Pilot for Dassault Aviation. I'm very happy to welcome you in the Falcon 6X cockpit. Uh, we are going to have a few words about the Easy 4 avionics that uh, help us fly safely to all destinations in, in the world and the way we interact with those uh, screens and uh, how we get the best out of this very nice avionic suit that we have on the uh, Falcon 6X. So the basics of it is uh, we have four displays, uh, four big displays, and we can go from one display to the other using a trackball that I just use here. When I'm sitting on the right, like now, I can go on those three screens. When I'm sitting on the left, like where you are now, you can go on your three screens. This uh, cursor that you see is fully interactive. I can uh, go on any points. And then if I press on the switch on the side, I go on a submenu. And on the submenu, you've got all the options linked to that very point. For example, I can go direct to this point and the system will compute the direct heading to go straight to Argis waypoint. And this is true on the waypoint list here. You see, I can go from one point to another and let's say Landivisio, uh, we want to uh, have a, a hold down there so we can uh, go and do a holding pattern. Here we go. So I define a hold and say, uh, I want to turn left and then I do apply and now I've got a hold I can activate and I've got a hold in Landivisio, uh, which is very nice and easy way to interact with uh, the, uh, the airfield. So you have seen that I changed the scale turning this rotary switch there. The uh, definition is very good. I've got what we call 2D and 3D AMM, which is detailed airport indications. And you see, if I keep zooming, I've got all informations. I've got the taxiways, I've got the apron slots, I can move on the airfield, and I can consult the bits and pieces. For example, I want to know which taxiway is there. And you see, it's a D taxiway starting there, going all the way uh, down to, uh, to, to the south. And unzooming, I'll go to, uh, all the way to a 4,000 nautical miles scale with a circular world on which is very easy to uh, move you see and zooming still and zooming and here we go now i can rotate go to my destination airfield dallas center of the map and zoom in again all the way to uh, the uh, parking slots very quickly and here you go you see you've got all the parking slot in dallas airport okay so quickly i can center back to uh, my own position so that I can get uh, ready for, for the flight. Okay, when I want to uh, get my flight ready, I just go on the flight management window, which is this one, and I've got different tabs right from the beginning. I can say which speed I want to cruise, at which altitude, how many passengers I've got, and how many fuel I will carry, and this gives me my uh, gross weight. Okay, so the next tab is the takeoff tab, or I'll select the runway. I will select the, the wind temperature, the Q&H, um, the arming of the autoscrotal right after takeoff, and I've got my computed takeoff parameters. This is done by the system, and I can compute that uh, on a dry or on a wet runway. Uh, the regulation is I've got to get a second way to check those data, so the second way of computation is done on the Falcon Sphere suit that we have got on the electronic fly bag on, on the side. And on those ones, I can compute those figures as well. And I just cross check to make sure that uh, those figures agree and that I can use them for takeoff. Very useful uh, part as well is in the uh, cruise tab. I have what I call the what if. The what if is what if, for example, on this very long trip, I accelerate to 0.83 of Mach, okay? Then I go on the compute key and I will have I will have all the computations done. Okay, so if I accelerate at 0.3 of Mach, 
it will cost me 700 pounds of fuel, but I will spare 20 minutes of, uh, of timing. Now I have all the elements to decide if I want to do that or not. I don't want to decide, I don't want to do that because I want to spare some fuel on this trip, okay? Uh, so you can uh, do all your fuel computation and also you'll have all details. I'm selecting the weapon list now in full horizontal display and so you see you have the wind, you can update the winds using data link. You can have your timing computed, your, uh, the hours at which you, you will reach each uh, point and the remaining fuel and your gross weight at this, uh, at this stage. So you can really manage your fuel precisely and make sure it's all okay for, 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 for your flight. And then obviously you have the landing tab where you set all the parameters for your approach. Like you can choose uh, the runway, many runways in Dallas, I'll select this one and just insert. And you have got your runway selected, I just activate that. And then you put in the wind just as I've done uh, before on the takeoff and you will get your landing parameters that I will send to the aircraft. All that can be flown using autopilot and auto throttle. Uh, so, and uh, also, I can quickly interact with my flight plan to graphically change something in the flight plan. I will show you, for example, I've, uh, I've got to modify my route from Argus. I'll just click on it. I'll say a main route, and I've got to overfly at this point. Okay, and then I've got to uh, overfly another point down there, or let's say this, this uh, field, and it's just a matter of activating. Then all the fuel and timing computation will be redone according to this change in my flight plan. So it's a quick interaction, quick way to interact with, uh, with uh, the, uh, the flight plan and to manage the flight plan. As you see, we have got some uh, red uh, pieces of uh, ground. This is the EGPWS. It will give you a warning if you come too close from uh, high ground and a pull-up warning if something happens and you come too close from uh, high, high, high ground. You also will have ADSB in and out traffic. So you'll see all the traffic around surrounding the uh, aircraft. And on this uh, CDTI traffic, you can go and consult and have the call sign of the aircraft as its closing speed, as its vertical speed. You have all the data you need to see what's happening around you. So your situation awareness is at, at the top. I didn't speak about the 3D AMM, so I'm just going to point that out in, uh, in the, the PDU. So we have seen the 2D AMM, which is the, the detailed uh, 2D view of the airfield with all the parking slots and everything. But you also have got in the PDU facing, facing, uh, face, facing you a 3D version of the world. We don't see it very well on this one, but you will have the uh, strip names, the uh, panels, like panels in, in, the, in the real world, telling you that you're going on the Fox taxiway, that you're going on the Alpha taxiway, and that's very useful uh, to use, especially if you have low visibility on a busy airfield with a lot of traffic around you and a lot of, uh, of, uh, a lot of uh, radio traffic, uh, a lot of messages. It's very useful. Uh, 2D and 3D AMM function. The EZ4 Avionics is based on Honeywell's Primus EPIC technology. It includes an auto throttle, which allows pilots to set parameters in the system and help reduce their workload. I will uh, show you the avionic tab and we will go and see the uh, auto speeds. You see that here, phase of flight by phase of flight, you can define what the auto throttle is going to do. Right from the departure into the climb, into the cruise, what sort of uh, cruise speed you want, and what uh, angle of descent you expect to have. So I like 2.7 because it gives you more time, so we select uh, 300 knots 2.7. Speed limitation, depending on the country you're flying on, and some special constraints, which could be speed constraints on a, on a point. So basically, it's all planned. And then you go on the FMS speeds on the auto throttle, and you don't have to worry anymore about your speed or Mach uh, management. It will be done according to your plan, so it will switch from one mode to the other, depending on the, on the phase of flight, and you won't have to touch the throttle anymore until nearly uh, landing. Uh, even when you get the flaps out, it will decelerate to the next flap position, according to what you set down there. So it's a big workload reduction, 
which means that you have more time to concentrate on the uh, tactical and strategical part of your mission. Where I'm going, is the weather good? Should I divert or have I got the fuel? Uh, you, you don't have to manage anymore the uh, uh, flying bits and pieces that we had to do in, in, in the past. Safety protections built into the flight deck can help pilots when they need to land or take off from challenging airfields. So, uh, obviously, sometimes we have to go to uh, very specific airfields where we have short runways, where we are high ground, uh, high mountains around, and the easy technology will really help us adapt to that. If you look at here, you see that uh, in the Geneva area, we have got some high ground around, which is well shown on the EGPWS, getting red and, uh, and yellow and getting the pull-up order if we were in flight facing this mountain. So this is really enhancing the uh, security of, uh, of the flying. Also, you can compute your, uh, your performance very precisely. As I said, you can go on the performance computation. So you see we have got all the speeds. We have a precise idea of the takeoff distance, which we can compare to what's available, okay, and which you double check with Falcon Sphere. And this is very sharp and precise. You can trust those numbers. And, uh, and uh, when, when you do fly, you find exactly the computed performance, which is a safe way to see if you can take off from uh, this place or if you can land with this place and if you can land in this place with what kind of fuel of, uh, or what, how many passengers or weight, extra weight in, in the aircraft. The next Falcon aircraft, the 10X, will have a touchscreen equipped avionics suite. So this easy Honeywell avionic suit has been developed now from quite a long time. We moved from easy two, easy three, easy four. So basically improved all the time, but keeping the same philosophy, which is direct interaction, uh, easy to understand some menus, uh, contextual in, in, uh, uh, in interaction with the system. And that's still what we have on the easy four. The next step will be on the Falcon 10X when it won't be easy anymore, it will be Nexus uh, avionics, and then we will have a full integration of touchscreens. Touchscreens are very good in that it helps you spare a lot of time. It's much quicker to just press on a display and be able to interact without having this cursor to move around. But touchscreens are not uh, sometimes the best way to interact, especially in turbulences. So we will keep a, a CCD, we will keep uh, uh, an improved CCD, we call that CCDNG. It will have a touch pad as well, and you can do on this CCD, you can do all the gestures that the young people are very used to, like pinch or tap or double tap. You can do all of it, but then you mix touch screens on the main screens and interaction with your end put strongly on the, on the device and not moving in turbulence. So you can really adapt to the flying conditions that you are uh, supposed to, uh, to expect. Also, on the tennis, we'll have the single throttle, no more two throttles, just one uh, throttle for the power axis with the possibility to, at, at the overhead control panel, to disconnect one engine from the uh, main, main throttle. So, a big improvement coming on the tennis, switching to uh, the next, next generation with a full touchscreen integration of the uh, avionics.